Gracious God, we come to you on this Thanksgiving Sunday with thanksgiving in our heart, knowing that you have called us to a life of prayer, a life in which we continually give you thanks for all that is and was and will be. We thank you today for your church, for the opportunity to be together in so many different ways that we have now experienced, to know your love, to experience your grace, to share out of the abundance with which you have blessed us, and to know in the midst of it all that you are with us. And yet, Lord, you know that this is a different Thanksgiving and a different Sunday than we've ever had, that as we share in this time that we're not together and and we're not able to celebrate and gather in the ways we always have but you know all that and you know what we need in the midst of that so we pray Lord that you would show us new ways instill in us the the spirit of hope that comes when we give thanks to know that you are gracious that you love us and you forgive us forgive us we pray for too often we fail you we we get so busy focused on the intricacies of life and the ever-changing nature of the world around us that we fail to focus on you let alone our neighbor forgive us we pray in this season lord we ask that you would instill in us a new sense of of gratefulness a sense of gratefulness that that forces us that causes us that inspires us to look to you and then to share your grace to look to you and then reach out in love to look to you and then share your story your gospel message with those who need to hear maybe for the first time or anew today bless us in the different ways we will gather this season, Lord. Keep us safe, we pray. We pray for those who are grieving, for the loss of loved ones. We pray for those who are worried, for those who are sick. Lord, we seek your healing, not just for us in body or in mind and spirit, but also healing for the world. May we work together to be your healing presence in the land. For you have come to us and are coming to us anew every day. 
Come to us now, we pray, not because we demand it, but because we know that you so earnestly yearn to be with us. Help us to open our hearts, to open our homes, to open our church to you. That you might reign and we might be with you now and forevermore. For you came to us. And when you did, Lord, you, you taught us how to pray because your disciples just didn't know how. Sometimes we don't either. So, Lord, help us share together in this prayer, your prayer, that we might always know this is how we can pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Hear the word of God. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you're worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's pray. Oh God, make me, your servant David, disappear so that your word might be revealed. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Certainly the most well-known story of these two sisters, Martha and Mary, is the one I've just read, this brief encounter with Jesus in Luke's gospel. Martha is the busy one. Mary is the one sitting at Jesus' feet. The story paints Mary as the one focused on her relationship with Jesus. But perhaps looking at the story, it, it doesn't really tell us the whole story. Relationships take time and work and sometimes courage. The story of Mary and Martha at home with Jesus is one of those stories that feeds my imagination. Uh, I, I can... Picture them at their home. Martha's busy in the kitchen. Mary sitting at Jesus' feet while Martha starts to get busier and busier and busier. I, I can hear in the kitchen pots and pans clanging and, and words being mumbled. And, and Not unlike the scenes that most of us remember from Thanksgiving's past. It may not be that way this year. And, and we lament that and yet... The opportunity we have this Thanksgiving is to, to do something new. To maybe use technology, to maybe be quiet. To not be as busy as we always have been. And, and this year really focus on choosing thankfulness, like the video reminded us last week. Rather than choosing to be so busy that we don't get caught up in all the other craziness that goes on in this season. Uh, I know it's not the way I want it to be. It wasn't the way Martha wanted it to be. And that's not to say that Mary got her way either. It's a story that it comes from a, a lengthy portion of Luke's gospel. Uh, that sometimes is called the, the travel narrative, where Jesus is traveling toward Jerusalem, traveling toward the cross and his death. It's a hard story. Because it's a story too many of us identify with one of the other characters. Stephanie Frey, who is a pastor, tells the story of a woman in, in one of her churches uh, from an article in the Christian Century from uh, 2004, I believe is where I saved it from. She tells the story of a woman in her church who never likes hearing this story. Because it, it makes her feel like she can't ever hope to get it right. If, like Martha, she works hard to make sure that everyone is comfortable and gets fed... She'll be labeled as over-functioning. 
If, like Mary, she sits and listens too long, she gets nothing done. To her, it seems like a no-win situation. And I dare say that's where many of us feel in the midst of this story, stuck somewhat in the middle. I suspect many of us, however, have an easier time identifying with Martha, if I'm guessing. There's so much to do. There, we're often overwhelmed by the frantic pace of our lives. Even in a pandemic, there's so much to do. The endless demands. So really and truly, who has time to pray? Who has time to spend with Jesus? Who has time to focus on on that relationship that should be the most important relationship we have? It's the others around us, the relationships that that invade our daily lives, our children, our parents, our neighbors, our workers, our bosses, our everybody gets a chunk of us. And, And those relationships are all important. And I know I should spend time with Jesus, but I just can't fit him into the rest of my day. It's easier, says Pastor Frey, to make a casserole for a grieving family than it is to offer words of hope in Christ, if we have them. It's easier to welcome a new neighbor with a socially distanced loaf of bread than it is to tell them about our virtual worship services and our Sunday evening service and the opportunity to do Sunday school online and let me just make a loaf of bread and and leave it on their doorstep. That's a whole lot easier in this season. It's a whole lot easier to say, I really need to take a Sunday off, even though we're not coming to the sanctuary right now. And you could come on Sunday nights and stay in your car, but really I'll watch the video maybe one night this week when it's easier to do so. And if you fall into that category, please don't feel like I'm stomping on your toes because I'm glad you're watching. Trust me. I'm glad you're watching because I get it. In a season like this, it's a whole lot easier to say, I really just need some time. And we get stuck in that struggle between what I know I should do for God and what I need to do for my neighbor, my friends, my spouse. Luke knew that when he wrote his gospel. And and Luke used this literary device called juxtaposition. I love that word juxtaposition in in which he proclaimed the gospel by contrasting stories in his gospel. And he does that with the story of Mary and Martha because it immediately follows the story of the Good Samaritan. One of the best known of Jesus' parables. It's a parable about our neighbors about our relationship with others. In, in contrast, the story of, of Martha and Mary is focused on our relationship with Jesus. With the Word. The parable of the Good Samaritan casts our gaze outward. That horizontal relationship we have to have with those around us. The story of Mary and Martha casts our our gaze vertically to that relationship we must have with the living God. It would be a mistake, however, to see a choice in this. Jesus does not say you love God or your neighbor. Instead, he says you love God and your neighbor. In the story of Martha and Mary, Jesus doesn't say, Martha, you're bad, and Mary, you're good. He just says, Mary's chosen a better way in this moment. The implication being that I am with you now because I'm not going to be with you much longer. It's not spend time with God or get busy doing the work God calls you to do. It's spend the time with God so that 
you can do the work God is calling you to do. You see, in the world today, and especially in the church today, there's this continuing struggle within the church to, to be attractive to people, to, to reach out using technologies and in, in more contemporary, we call it music, uh, in, in ways that, that cause people to want to wanna be part of what's going on. But in so doing, we forget that that's all horizontal stuff. We come to church to spend time with people, to, to be seen and see and, and, and to, to fellowship and to spend time with people. Something that we haven't really been able to do in a long time. So I would hope that we're spending a whole lot more time now with God in that, that vertical relationship that unfortunately the modern church doesn't emphasize as much. There's a reason I like standing here so that when you see me, you see directly over my shoulder the cross that is always present above our communion table. It, it's not a crucifix. It's not a, a cross on which our crucified Savior hangs. Instead, it's, it's the cross of the resurrection, the empty cross that helps us remember that we have two Directional relationships, the vertical with God and the horizontal with each other. And Christ came for all of that to help us know God Himself so that we could then truly love each other. This season, the season of Thanksgiving, is a season where we can focus, especially this year on how thankful we are that God is our God and that He loves us so that we can love each other. Don't let this season spin out of control. Don't let the, the world tell you you have to be so busy that it looks like it always has looked. God is calling us not to look like we've always looked, but to look like God. Maybe this year our emphasis isn't so much on the decorations, but more on the relationships we have lost. Maybe this year it's not so much on the, the value of the gift, but the thought that goes into the gift. Maybe this year it's not so much on the food on the table as it is the people we help to feed. You see... The seasons before us, Thanksgiving, Advent, Christmas, have become so busy in the world that we now have Black November <laughs> rather than Black Friday. I get it. The economy needs us to spend some money. I get it. I don't begrudge that. But I hope we don't lose sight of the reason we have the holidays we have of Thanksgiving being thankful for a place where we can worship freely and openly. A place where we can speak our mind and not be afraid of being put down by a tyrant. A place where we can love our neighbor regardless of the color of their skin. We must be thankful. Not because we owe it to God and not because God expects it of us because we can't help it. God has loved us and given us all that we have and all that we are. And yeah, life is hard right now. It's hard for everybody. I'm not special. It's tough. But I am so thankful that God has given us each other. I'm so thankful for your words of encouragement. I'm so thankful for your prayers in the midst of difficult times for my family. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to pray for you and with you. I'm so thankful for technology that allows us to continue to, to be the church and to grow, reaching out to new people who've never been inside this room where I am. But now count First United Methodist Church of Newport, Tennessee as their home church. 
Oh, taste and see that he is good. Come and know the gospel truth. That cross behind me is the way. For it points to God and into the world. That we might know that he is with us. That we can be in the world. The good news. Even when we don't feel like it. Even when we know we're supposed to be thankful and we just don't have it to say or to give or to do. That God still loves us. And he comes to us anew every day and he says, I give you breath. Choose today to breathe for him. He'll be with you every breath you take. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. Go in peace. And may the peace of Christ go with you. Amen.